7 May, uh, South Africa held its general elections and the African National Congress Party walked away with about 62.5% of the vote. A very decisive victory as IHS had forecast uh, several months beforehand. And this is also well above the um, respectability margin of about 60%, which IHS had um, said this would be, if the ANC got more than 60%, and President Jacob Zuma would be able to walk away with a very decisive win and enter a uh, second term in office, much less beholden to the left wing and the labor unions than he was in his first term. Then on to that, from that, the, Af the uh, Democratic Alliance main opposition party um, upped its vote by about 5% from the 2009 elections. Uh, this was a very decisive victory for them as well, in, especially in the Western Cape province, and they also increased their share of the vote in um, Gauteng province. The other success story, the party that came third in these elections, was the more radical left-wing economic freedom fighters party led by Julius Malema. Now, many people had seen this as a one-man uh, show, but since they've taken away about 6% of the national vote, even though they were only formed last year, shows that there was a, a strong protest vote in South Africa against the ANC and an emerging left wing on the political spectrum. Uh, President Jacob Zuma will uh, move into a second term after the it is second inauguration on the 24th of May. Um, and at that point, he will appoint a much more technocratic and business-friendly government than he had done in his first term, again mostly because he has lost this dependence on the left wing of the party. He's much more free to do whatever he wants at this stage. Um, the key person uh, who will almost certainly head some sort of super economic uh, portfolio will be the deputy party president, Cyril Ramaphosa. If he is appointed as national deputy president, which is very likely, that will be a strong indicator that the ANC, in its second term now, will uh, veer to the right rather than the left, as many other commentators have said. Another key indicator would be the appointment of the finance minister. In his first term, uh, finance minister Pravin Gordon uh, stuck to strong fiscal conservative um, attitudes and policies, but he is likely to step down. Uh, and be replaced. Now, there are a number of candidates who could replace the finance minister, um, and one of them would be the former uh, governor of the South African Reserve Bank, Tito Mboweni. Now, if Mboweni, for example, were appointed to the finance ministry, that again would show that in the second term of Jacob Zuma, um, the government would stick to much more fiscally conservative policy policies and promote uh, investment from foreign investors uh, and other businesses in, into the country. Now at this stage, um, the ANC has an economic flagship policy. This is something called the National Development Plan. This is essentially a policy, a broad-based economic strategy looking out for the next 20 years. It was adopted by the ANC party last year and now just needs to be implemented. It was co-drafted by Cyril Ramaphosa, who is likely to head up uh, a team that will, look, uh, will seek to um, recover economic growth and lower unemployment in South Africa. The key trends, the key uh, policies of this National Development Plan is to increase GDP growth in South Africa from around 27 at the moment to between 5 and 6% over this time period. It will also look to increase or add about 11 million jobs to uh, the country's economy. And it will try to do so by boosting infrastructure, especially in the transport and power sectors. It will also look to promote uh, lower taxes on businesses. Uh, and it will try to liberalize labor markets in the country. Now, the government is keen to promote uh, joint ventures between public and private enterprises, especially for this infrastructure boost. Uh, however, this may bring uh, some uh, risks, especially to foreign investors, whereby the government is more likely to favor South African or possibly even Chinese companies rather than, say, EU or US companies. And this is a trend we're seeing more generally in South Africa at the moment.
In terms of unrest, uh, IHS is not for forecasting a, a drastic uh, decrease in, in, in the risk profile. Looking specifically at industrial action, uh, IHS had forecast that the uh, government would be more likely to intervene in strikes ongoing in the country after the elections, especially since these type of things will become less politicized at that stage. Now, we've already seen this one week after the elections. The government deployed the police and the military to various townships uh, and to try and break the strike affecting the world's three largest platinum miners. This is a strike has been ongoing since 23rd of January and is the longest strike in the country's history. Outside of the uh, mining sector, we're also looking at increased strike action, uh, which could be very frequent, protracted, and with violent spillover risks uh, in the manufacturing sector, especially car manufacturing and steel making, as well as power, construction, uh, and transport sectors, the usual suspects especially. And beyond labor action, um, township violence, and these are essentially protests uh, over poor or perceived to be poor failing public service delivery by the ANC government. Um, these have increased since about 2010, 2011 quite significantly. We're not expecting these type of protests to drop. Uh, and in fact, we're forecasting higher spillover risks to local infrastructure and local businesses. Now, despite this decisive victory in the 2014 elections, uh, we do not think that President Jacob Zuma will serve a full second term, which would also be his last term. Um, his personal approval rating, his job performance approval rating, has fallen. Uh, in November 2013, it fell to about 50%. And that, of course, is way below the 62.5% of the party won in the elections, uh, the national elections. So the party may see Jacob Zuma as a liability going into the 2019 general elections. A major indicator of this would be the ANC's performance in the 2016 municipal elections. If the party fails to carry major cities like Cape Town, which has already lost to the opposition Democratic Alliance, or Johannesburg, at that stage President Jacob Zuma would be more likely to step down uh, around 2017 when the ANC holds an elective conference. Now, his decisive victory in 2014 does indicate that President Zuma will be able to uh, influence very strongly the decision to appoint his successor. Now, there are already rumours within the party that he is favouring, first of all, his ex-wife and the African Union Commission chairperson, uh, Kosazana Dlamini Zuma, as well as his protégé from KwaZulu-Natal province, who is the current ANC party treasurer general, a gentleman called Zweli Mkize. Now, the party itself may favor Cyril Ramaphosa. If Ramaphosa is successful in increasing GDP and properly implementing the National Development Plan, then that he became a serious challenger to any Zuma favorites towards the 2017 elections. The worst case scenario in, in, in terms of, of successions would be if the uh, Ramaphosa and Zuma camps do not find a compromise candidate, in which case a more open succession uh, contest could emerge and new candidates for the succession uh, could try and take a stab at the presidency in 2017 or before the 2019 elections. Uh, various people are already being rumoured to um, be aiming for the presidency at that stage. Uh, one would be Baleka Mbete, she's the ANC national chairperson, as well as the ANC secretary general, Jhwede Mantashe.